All right, tonight we are very fortunate to have Art Eddy with us tonight. Uh, Art is the owner, author, writer, and podcast producer at The Art of Fatherhood. He and his wife, Jess, are blessed with two daughters. He has a passion for fatherhood and enjoys talking with other dads about their fatherhood journey. Uh, he, Art has created several podcasts that focus on fatherhood. He has been responsible for securing over 500 guests for a variety of platforms, including hundreds of A-list fathers through, throughout the pop culture, sports, and business landscape. And he is a co-author with John Finkel, and they wrote The Life of Dad book, which was published by Simon & Schuster in 2019. All right, we are thrilled to have you tonight. Um, if you would, feel free to take up to 30 minutes. Um, I'll end the recording after that, and I will give you a five-minute uh, warning before we before we wrap up. All right, floor is yours, sir. I see to unmute there. And thank you very much. We appreciate it. Uh, hey, everybody! Uh, thank you again for the introduction, Alan and Tom. I know uh, you're hanging out with your daughter uh, this weekend, and so obviously, if a guy who runs the site called The Art of Fatherhood, totally get it. And I'm glad you're hanging out with her instead of uh, us right now. But uh, I'll give a little background besides the intro that uh, Alan did. Um, moved around a lot as as a kid. Um, I, you know, was from Buffalo, New York. Well, I was born. In, I was the only one that was not born in um, Buffalo, New York. I was born in Indiana. We moved back to Buffalo. Moved to Illinois. Then we moved to New Hampshire. Met my wife in New Hampshire. Moved to New Jersey, and now I'm in North Carolina. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is I think all of that moving made me kind of a uh, extrovert, and I would always try and like talk to people, try and be there. And I found the importance of, you know, you got to find your own friends, especially when you move around. So that was kind of at the, at the early stages of my life. I'm like, all right, I know that if I need to want, if I want to have friends, I got to go make them. So just wanted to give you kind of that background. And uh, the art of fatherhood is very important to me because uh, I, not only does it make me a better father, but I get to have a chat just like you guys every uh, Sunday. And I know that uh, you guys are in other groups, it sounds like when you guys were uh, coming onto this uh, platform where you're just kind of taking the time to chat with other guys, you know, and, and see where they're at and try and find a connection. I think the biggest thing for me is finding connection with other people, especially dads and taking, you know, good advice that they have given to me and other people um, that, you know, listen to my podcast. So I, I love the fact that Tom and you guys are all here because I think the importance of finding a connection, finding your tribe and making sure that you're not alone is huge because I think the idea of a man is a rock and he's got to be there for everybody but himself. It's kind of going the way of the dodo, thankfully. And we understand that like we need to be there for each other and it's okay to speak your feelings, cry once in a while, um, be there for those in need right away. Like you have uh, you know, if you're very blessed to have two or three people that you can call in the middle of the night for whatever reason, and they'll be there for you. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I started the Art of Fatherhood to kind of promote fatherhood, to promote dads of all walks, sizes, and shapes, and backgrounds, and saying that, you know, every dad has a voice, and let's kind of carry that voice together. Um, for me, um, you know, I think finding a connection with people beyond fatherhood is like trying to find things in, in sports or through my church. Uh, you know, the prayer this, uh, this, uh, this evening where he said, you know, set, a, set aside everything I know about you, myself, others, uh, is very true. I think nowadays uh, with social media, with politics, wh whatever the case may be, it's either you're with me or you're against me. And there's like this absolute mindset where you have to feel, uh, totally agree and the art of conversation is kind of lost and we only get like 30 second or two minute sound bites or 148 or 240 characters. And it's like, you know, that person right off the bat just because of all of that. So I think the biggest thing is trying to find connections that are honest, finding connections that make you yourself better and make the other person better and setting aside, you know, the idea of what you think about yourself or uh, others is huge. And my family and I volunteered at this one uh, place in Raleigh uh, over the weekend. We, we just started doing it last month and we're trying to go once every month and we're, we're helping people with food. We're helping people with clothes. We're helping people with books and things that people maybe not uh, can afford on a day-to-day -day basis. And it kind of just puts things in perspective, puts uh, your life, you know, if you think you're having a bad day, walk in someone else's shoes and 
it's not only a good learning point for me, uh, I think my, my daughters and my wife and I all agree this is something that not only makes us feel better, but we learn from other people and we know that, you know, it could, it could be there. It could be us. It's, you know, who your, your life can go any which way. And it's a 50, 50 coin flip, which way it goes and depends on who's in your corner and what type of resources you have. So there's a lot of things that came from this weekend that when we reflect on what we did on, on Saturday, we just kind of realized it's like, you got to have a connection with people. It's strive to find out where you guys are together. And the guy that was at the table with me when we were trying to get groceries for people in need, he w- he went through the program and that was a good life lesson for me to see that you wonder sometimes if you're at an event and if you're doing something to help other people are like, is this really helping someone? Are they going to try and better themselves? And is it just giving them food for the weekend or, you know, a week or whatever, but talking with this gentleman and learning that he was once a person that would come to get food and clothes and all that. And now he's been uh, uh, six years out of the program. He's got a a full, uh, full full-time job. And just, he talks about wanting to give back because other people shared, you know, showed him compassion, showed him love. And so I think, you know, God works in mysterious ways and he, he points you into different directions on how you can make an impact. And so it is, you know, helping others. It is, like I said, through me uh, running that the site, The Art of Fatherhood and the podcast and talking to other dads and seeing the the hurdles that they have to go through, whether they're, you know, co-parenting, whether they're being a dad for the first time or adopting or someone that, you know, a gay dad who's like trying to adopt and has to jump through all these hoops. So you see different trials and tribulations that people go through. And I think compassion uh, definitely comes through these interactions. And, uh, I, I, you know, just the, uh, the importance of finding a tribe and making sure that you check in on people just because, you know, you might be checking out for, you know, checking in with your family, obviously, or friends, but there are certain guy groups that I've been in they're like the dad blogger groups that I've been in and in the past six months three or four dads took their own life and when you hear that you know like I'm so sorry my condolences but then you see other comments saying like oh we knew it was going to happen it's sad but we didn't know how we could help him and to me that really hurts me and that like how how did we not find a way to help this person and I think that finding connections, finding ways to see people from a different perspective or learn about someone's uh, story and actually asking questions and, and listening. I think the biggest thing is not only are we there to talk and be there for someone, but we're there to listen. The old adage where it's like you have two, you know, two ears and one mouth for a reason where you should listen more and talk less um, in the past few, in the past few years that has rang true for me, I kept on hearing that. And it's like, all right, maybe God, I'm a talker as you probably guys can tell, but like, uh, the idea of me trying to listen more, and I know I'm supposed to talk right now, but I can't wait to chat with you guys after this time is up, uh, and just kind of learn more about what you guys are doing here. The, the, the great group that Tom has created here. Um, but you know, just the idea of listening. And I think that has made me a better dad, a better husband, uh, and is a better friend. And one of the stories I'd like to share is that I, my, my, my oldest daughter was going through some tough times with one of her best friends that kind of parted ways. They went to two different, uh, high schools and she was upset because she really valued that friendship. And she felt like, why my friend go and all that. And, you know, I tried to talk to her about it and I wasn't really getting the right words for it and a few months later we went up to New Hampshire and uh, Boston uh I, and to visit family to visit friends to visit college buddies and the guys that I went to school with and I roomed with at UNH one of them we were talking about this the same thing about just having time for each other and he said you know that old adage of like friends come into your lifetime uh comes it come into your life for a reason a season or a lifetime and I was like you know I understood what he meant, but we were talking a little bit more about that. And the reason could be you're helping them through something, or they could be helping you through something. And then a season where maybe it's just middle school that, you know, uh, my daughter was friends with her, you know, one of her best friends before they kind of parted ways and went to different high schools or a lifetime where 
just like my college buddies were there for each other. You know, one of the guys drove like two and a half hours just to hang out two and a half hours with me and just to go back because we were hanging out on like a Wednesday. And he's like, I wouldn't miss this for the world. And that meant a lot to me. So I had a chance to reflect on the, on the, on the flight back. And I was writing some notes down and I wrote an article that was just titled a reason a season in a lifetime and how much you need to nurture relationships and the ones that actually care for you uh, you should do the exact same thing and care for them. And sometimes it's going to be maybe it's not always going to be 50 50. Sometimes they're going to pull the weight. Sometimes you're going to pull the weight. But to me, like true friendship and true honesty and true care comes um, not like a, a tally board like you did this week. So I got to do next week. It just comes and flows and ebbs and flows and all that. So um that is one of the things that I've kind of learned about making sure that I'm nurturing the the relationships that I should nurture. And how I kind of learned that, I think, was through the pandemic. I think we've all learned different lessons through the pandemic, whether they're good, they're bad, or they're ugly. And whether it was politics, whether it was to mask or not to mask or get <laughs> the vaccine or not to get the vaccine, there were certain relationships or acquaintances that might have kind of dwindled just because of that. And then you realize you might have a little regret. You might have a little angst about like, why am I not friends with this person anymore? And then it kind of comes back into that reason, season or lifetime mentality where it's like, okay, you you don't have to fret over the, the relationships that you might've lost unless you really want to fight for them. But if you're not feeling the exact same um, effort from other people, then it's time to kind of move on. And then it's okay. I think the biggest Thing that has taught me through the pandemic is it's okay to do a shift in your life, a shift in the balance of how you look at things and where you put your priorities. And my wife and I made sure we put our priorities into our kids, uh, the friendships that we felt like really cared about us. We want to make sure we show that we really cared about them. So um, these past few years, I just kind of um, put more in importance on the relationships that we either consider as, you know, really good friends, or we have a family right down the street that we call family because they have kind of the same mindset about raising their kids, the same uh, outlook on life. And um, I had a medical emergency and we really didn't know anybody. And they, you know, helped uh, my wife and my kids out when I was in the hospital. And that was just kind of solidified, like, all right, these people will roll with us, they're ride or die, whatever happens, we'll be there. And um I, and that, that's something that I stress, not just on my site and my podcast, but with our daughters, we're just kind of talking about the importance of finding true relationships and true connections and not trying to force anything. So um, that's, I mean, I, I, that's pretty much all I really have to say in, the, in, the, in, in terms of the importance of finding friendship and, you know, making sure that you nurture them. And I think for me, realizing that I do need my my own time, right? Like there are times where I might do stuff for my wife, might do stuff for my kids, might do stuff for my family. But then I realize that the the, the my individual individuality is kind of like lacking. And I'm not I'm not kind of centering on myself or not even thinking about myself. And that will take a drain on other people's relationships. And I need to make sure that I have time for myself and the right time. And so I kind of find little bits and pieces throughout the year. I'm a big football fan. So my friends and I get together for my fantasy football league that I've been running for about like 15 years now. And so we have a group chat every Sunday. We're, you know, talking, talking smack, talking about like, oh, you should put this player in. And that's kind of like my time. And I kind of almost like build it up throughout the year. That whole football season is kind of where I'm, you know, storing up all my nuts for the winter like if I was a squirrel and I'm like all right cool this is my time this is my time to just enjoy and watch seven hours of commercial free football and my family gets it they totally understand it they're like all right dad's watching red zone and uh, my my youngest daughter she'll watch with me and so it's just certain things that um, I have found that you know like if you want to be there for others you got to be right you know by yourself um, both mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and you got to find ways to take care of yourself so you can take uh, care of others. I was talking to a, a young dad who was looking for, um, you know, advice. And I said to him, it's like, you know, when you go on a plane and they go through all the instructions that everybody probably doesn't listen to because they got their earbuds in and, and, you know, not even paying attention. I said that one point, if you do pay attention, they were like, in case of emergency and, you know, you need to put the oxygen mask on, 
put the oxygen mask on yourself first and then worry about others. I said, it's kind of a fun metaphor for dads and moms or whatever, where it's like, make sure you're taking care of yourself as well as your family, because if you don't have any oxygen, you're not going to be helping out anybody. So I said, make sure you got time for yourself. So, um, and it's a great lesson for me to like rehash these nuggets of, of advice that I've learned and that I pass on because it gives me a, like a check. I'm like, am I doing that? And not just making the sure, making sure that I have my own, my own time, but making sure that I am nurturing relationships that I am paying it forward. And, uh, you know, I'll kind of close out here where I mentioned earlier where we were helping other people, but I think when you find a group or find someone to help out with whatever they're going, whether it's a big brother, big sister program or teaching, you know, a kid down the street who might not have, you know, a family member there 24 seven, like how to throw a football or how to ride a bike. Not only are you helping them, but they're helping you and you realize the important things in life. And there's cliches there for a reason. And when they always say like, you know, baby changes everything, well, it does, or, you know, all the cliches are thrown out there, but they're true because everyone has experienced that cliche or that feeling. So, um, and I think you guys are doing that right now where you're finding a group and, or you're finding a person to help. And while you're helping that person, that person in turn is helping you. So, uh, you know, it was an honor to chat with you guys. I'm looking forward to kind of connecting and seeing where everybody else is at and, um, again, um, if you want to check out the podcast, it's Art of Fatherhood. But again, thank you for letting me time, giving me the time to speak and really appreciate and uh, learn more about you guys.